Yes, we do. We've got little Hosanna, who's not by himself either. He is being accompanied by over, I would say, maybe close to 60, 70 elephants. And it seems as though there is another leopard here with him. I haven't seen the other leopard just yet. Sounds like the other leopard is just somewhere close by. But as we were kind of driving through with these elephants, another vehicle came to join from the other side. And these guys are sandwiched in amongst all of the elephants at the moment. So it's super exciting. I think it's Hosanna. I'm not 100% sure. I've only just seen his back but it looks like him and I think the other one from what the guys say looks like apparently Tundi is also here which is really interesting but either way it's super exciting like I say we had elephants absolutely everywhere they came down to Chitwa to drink and then as they were coming back they all kind of huddled together and were making a lot of noise and the other vehicle came in and they managed to find these two leopards just relaxing in amongst all of these elephants which is absolutely phenomenal but you can see Hosanna is completely relaxed he's not worrying at all he's taking it very easily easy at this stage he's having a really good nap the other leopard like I say I'm not 100% sure what she's doing but it sounds like the like I said that the other guy says it's Tundi but maybe what we should do is just reposition ourselves and go and have a look at which other leopard we've got while Hosanna is so sleepy let's maybe just check up on which other leopard there is we can also show you all the elephants that are behind us because there is a mountain of them as well at the back but how exciting is this this is so cool it's amazing what happens at Chitra Dam like I say you'd think on a on a sort of overcast cold day like today that we'd have a situation where these animals wouldn't really be coming down to the dam to be able to drink they would rather have a situation where they would kind of be sitting in somewhere where it's nice and cool there we go there's the other leopard over there I can see it now so I'm going to quickly just go into that direction and have a look all the elephants have gone to the south of us a little bit and have moved off slightly so I wonder if maybe just maybe they're not going to come into this area. Let's go around this section here. This should be quite interesting. Is it? No, it looks like Shadow to me. It doesn't look like Tundi. It looks like Shadow from what I can see. So that's not a surprise with the amount of movement that Shadow has been having. You can hear the elephants in the distance. The amount of movement that Shadow has been doing over the last little bit and in into Little Gauri, it wouldn't surprise me at all. But it does... Is it Shadow? It looks like Shadow to me. It doesn't look like Tundi at all. Oh, she looks as though she's going to get comfy. Are you bored of Hosanna? So, I wonder if we're going to have a situation where Hosanna is just going to follow Shadow around again for the next little bit. He seems as though he keeps latching on to all of his siblings. He spends time with Tumba, he spent a lot of time with Tundi, until I think Tundi gave him a send-off with now that she's got a new cub. She's not going to be too interested in having some company around her in the form of a young male. But now he's latching on to the other sister in the form of Shadow. And she seems to be fairly tolerant. You can see she's curled up, she's sleeping, Hosanna's lying flat. There is in no way any aggression towards each other. There is no way chasing each other. And I wonder if Shadow's cub is not also somewhere in this general vicinity. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if both of these leopards were here with Hosanna. He, like I say, seems to follow them around. And I, I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided whether it's because he knows he can get food from these older leopards or if it's a situation... No, it's definitely Shadow now that I can see her. So, or if it's a situation where he's just craving some sort of company you can see there's actually an ellie just in the background behind shadow now just starting to come through they're going to start appearing from the left hand side so it's absolutely insane to see all of this together there's the ellie on the back left chitwa in the on behind that and it's just absolutely amazing now james you agree with me and you're say that this is shadow as well so yes it's definitely a shadow now that she's looked at us it's most certainly her um, and i believe tundi was at some stage was going towards the den this morning so i would have been surprised if she had been here and like i say it seems as though hosanna has been following shadow around over the last little bit it seems as though he's been with her for three or four days kind of in the same areas where she's been and i wonder if it's just you know a kind of thing where like i say that he's craving a little bit of companionship or he knows that these older females are incredibly incredibly experienced and they know where to find food and so he follows them around to be able to get food from them from now so it's an interesting thing but amazing to see it's really very very cool and, and it's amazing that it's all from the same lineage that we're seeing so we're seeing you know shadow and tandy and 
Hosanna, all kind of in the same place as Tumba as well. It's so, so cool. And we have once again got an epic afternoon that's going to unfold. It'll be amazing to watch the interactions that take place, not only between the two leopards, but the elephants as well. Now, James, who has always got to contribute to the drives, has decided that he's come up with the trump card this afternoon and has something incredibly special on Bushwalk. Well, indeed, our leopard is beautiful, but all curled up in a ball. It's, like I was saying earlier, a cold, overcast, grey afternoon, and the wind is picking up, and it's starting to get cooler and quite chilly, and that's why I think our leopard's all rolled up in a tight ball. It seems as though Shadow has been feeding really well lately. I've seen a number of updates on her killing baby impalas, and so she seems to be catching a lot of food, and maybe she's had a meal at some point yesterday, and now it's just time to rest. But it's really interesting to me, her behavior, and, and both her and Hosanna, because she has got her back completely turned to where Hosanna is. Hosanna is lying behind us. So if she was worried about that male, she would be a lot more, sort of a lot different in her approach to him. She would have turned, she would have been facing him, she would have then been quite uncomfortable and try and make her way out as soon as he was not looking at her. But in this situation, she seems completely non-perturbed by his presence and it really doesn't seem to care at all that he's around. I suppose at the end of the day, he's not a big male and so she doesn't have to worry too much. What astounds me about this whole thing, though, is that you would think a female with a cub, particularly, you know, Shadow, who's had a number of her cubs that have been killed by various different predators, would be far more defensive of her cub and would try and chase this young male away. But for some reason, she's allowed it, and these the cub and Hosanna seem to have no aggression between each other either, and they seem to be fine together, which is absolutely astounding. Paul, are you wondering if I think Shadow and Hosanna realize that they are from the same lineage and that they are siblings? Paul, I, I don't know. I mean, I, there's obviously senses in a leopard that go far beyond our understanding, and we often think that we are the most intelligent beings out here. And yes, we do display a lot of intelligence, but I think there's a lot deeper understanding from these animals than we really think. So I, I would imagine that maybe there's some sort of chemical signature within their urine that maybe is recognizable to them. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems more to me the fact that this is a young male leopard that really is not displaying any aggression to her cub, not displaying any aggression to her, and that's why she seems to be allowing it. You probably find the first interaction there was a bit of aggression that took place, but since then, because they've come across each other so many times, it almost seems as though they're just kind of allowing it to happen, and there's really no issue. You can actually see there's an elephant now coming straight up the path almost towards Shadow, so maybe the Ellie's will get involved and start actually kind of going after them. You can just see its feet in the background there, and it's trunk moving so I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a situation where these Ellie's are going to move up there's another big female coming past as well so it's going to be a situation where we're going to have lots of things all happening at once although the thing about the Ellie's is that their direction is seems to be moving away from us rather than actually straight towards us and so I think shadow will be just fine but back to the, the sort of recognizing maybe there is an element a chemical signature like I say or some sort of vocalizing or something that they're able to communicate that they're in some way related I'm not sure I, I think it's more just a behavioral aspect that allows them to be more sort of tolerable of this male what interests me though more than anything about this whole process has been Tingana over this sort of last few months Tingana to me is not nearly as aggressive nor as prominent as what we saw him a few months ago. Now, I know a lot of people are going to probably raise their eyebrows and think, what am I talking about? But I've been watching Tingana and looking for signs of him, and, and I've noticed over the last few months that his, his appearance and his sort of amount of... I don't know, his visibility, let's call it, on Juma has decreased and he seems to be spending less and less time on the western part of Juma, more and more towards the central parts. Now, that could be because Tandi has obviously given birth and he's concentrating in that area, but I have a funny feeling that he is being severely pressured by a number of different... Um, males at the moment, particularly this new male that's made an appearance over the last few weeks. He was on Juma two days ago. Subsequent to that, yesterday morning when Noel saw Tingana and, and other guests saw Tingana who I spoke to, they told me that he's got a heavy limp on him at the moment. And I wonder if that male didn't have a clash with Tingana at some point. There might also be pressure from quarantine from the eastern side. And I think Tingana is starting to feel the pinch a little bit. And his movements are starting to get smaller and smaller, much like what happened with Mvula when he started to go into that period where he was starting to be pushed out. And it worries me that that's the case because at the end of the day, Tandi's cub survival hinges on Tingana being able to push these other males away. And his reactions to Hosanna 
Hosanna seems to also be very light at the moment. Even though Hosanna is lifting his tail and spraying, Tingana keeps kind of almost just not worrying about it. I haven't seen Tingana vocalizing. I haven't seen him going into areas where Hosanna has been spending time and really kind of setting an example and really establishing himself as the dominant male. It's been really interesting to watch and maybe it's just because we haven't spent that much time with Tingana, but it's his tracks certainly aren't in as many places as we thought they would be and, and is a situation where it seems as though he's not moving in nearly as big a territory as he was before. Now, I believe that you guys can see that she's got a little cut on her paw, which doesn't surprise me. I, I suppose she's had a couple rough days. She's had Hosanna hanging around. She's had the wild dogs chase her up into a small tree where she had a kill and she was trying to kind of balance herself in a tree for a while. So there might be a little cut from the dogs maybe nipping at her, maybe hyenas, or she went up a tree and gave herself a little cut, or you never know, maybe she's even had a little bit of a scrap with Hosanna himself. Hosanna looks absolutely perfect. When I drove past him just now, he didn't look as though he has got a single scratch on him as opposed to Shadow. So I don't know if they've been fighting. Also, you never know, maybe this female and the male that were mating that have moved into this area over the last few days, maybe there's been a bit of scrap with them as well. It's, it's always a situation that these things can happen. Whenever there's a new male around, it's always a concern for all of our females that have cubs because ultimately new males will try and kill the cubs to bring the females back into Estrus. And that male and female that were seen mating on Juma are not only in the heart of Tandy's territory, but they've now pushed south, I believe, today. We're seen on Hofmans, which is the heart of Shadow's territory too. So it's interesting. Maybe that might m means that that's why Shadow is so far east at the moment at Chitra Dam and why Tandi is pushing more northeast into Juma itself. Anyway, it's it's an interesting time and the dynamics of leopards are constantly changing on Juma. But while we kind of contemplate how this is all going to play out, let's go across to James Hendry, who's probably contemplating where he's going to be using his lower limbs to send him in which direction he would like to go. Well, Noel, I'm about to make you more jealous because not only has Hosanna got his head up, but it also appears as though Hosanna has got a nice meal. Whether he's taken it from Shadow or he's managed to get it himself, there you can see a diker dangling from the tree. And I actually didn't even notice it just now. It was a situation where I kind of drove in. I was so excited to see Hosanna, I forgot completely that there might even be that possibility. But it explains why both of them are sitting so relaxed and not really kind of moving around too much. I have a funny feeling that this is Shadow's kill that Hosanna has maybe come in and out muscled her and taken it for himself. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. He's getting to that size and that age now where he is going to start kind of bossing his older siblings around, particularly the girls, and being able to take things for himself. Or maybe she'll just allow it to share with him. I don't know. At the end of the day, though, this is obviously Hosanna's area that he spends a lot of time. So it's possible he did kill it and then commotion has caused Shadow to come in and have a look. That is entirely possible and we can't write that off either. But either way, it's exciting for us. It means that I'm sure he'll be here tomorrow morning still. It's not really that much food there. It's probably enough for him to kind of eat through the night and be lounging about in this particular area tomorrow morning. Where the shadow stays, I'm not quite sure. It might mean that she starts to move off, but it'll be interesting. I would imagine that tomorrow morning they should still be in this particular section. But he's looking absolutely magnificent. I haven't seen Hosanna really nicely since I've been back from leave. I just had him briefly the other day crossing into Little Gauri, and it was kind of a you know a little glimpse. And then, you know, since then it's been very slim pickings with Hosanna, but he's starting to look really big. He's got this little dewlap that's starting to grow now. It's amazing actually to see it. You kind of almost have that feeling of being quite proud as you watch these guys grow up and see them blossoming into an incredibly big, beautiful male leopard that has really found his way in this particular section. And I hope, I really do hope that he ends up being somewhere close by, if not dominant over the Juma area itself. It'll be amazing if he does stay. He's a, such a beautiful individual and quite a character at the end of the day. Him and Tumba have a quite special place and I would love for, imagine if it happened, the two of them, I know it won't ever happen and this is complete utter dreaming, but imagine if the two of them did form a coalition together and we had a Tumba Hosanna coalition. It would be quite something to watch the two of those guys walking around. Of course, like I say, it won't happen, but at the moment they seem to enjoy spending time together, so who knows? Maybe we will see them more frequently as partners in crime.
But you can see he's very relaxed. And the reason why he's so relaxed is because he's got a kill here. He doesn't really need to go anywhere. And of course, Shadow is the same. They're both just sitting, probably eyeing this out. That's why she keeps kind of lifting her head every now and then and gazing in this direction. It's because the kill is here. She's just watching to see if Osana maybe has moved off so that she can move in and be able to then feed off the carcass itself. Now, unfortunately, there are a number of other cars that do want to head into this area and so we really can't spend too much longer with them so we're probably going to leave them where they are now it's been absolutely wonderful to see them i would like to have stayed longer but there is a number like i say of other cars so while we head on out let's go back across to james and see what he's pottering about with now on his bushwalk well, our two leopards are fast asleep james henry they are taking it very easy and i hope this bodes well for the Friday TV show that we will be doing on for Big Cat Week, that it will be at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I'm hoping that these two will stick around because it will be lovely for James, who's going to be hosting from this area, I would imagine. And maybe these two will appear for him. I know James has a very soft spot for Hosanna, and the more time that James gets to spend with him, the better. So I do hope that he does appear for James and, and that they have a magic time with him all around Chitwa Dam and, and hopefully Shadow also arrives with the little cup. Now while we've been sitting here, I said that I was going to be leaving shortly but some of the other guys very kindly decided that they will pull out and leave the sighting before us so we can spend a little bit longer. So we have to be very thankful for uh, Peter who always helps us as much as he can. And while we've been sitting here, there's been some Impalas uh, alarm calling behind me so I wonder if maybe just Shadow's Cub is not somewhere close by as well and if not Shadow's Cub you never know Tingana wasn't too far from here yesterday so maybe he's arriving on the scene at some point too and you can never write off Tumba in this area as well so worth maybe just sitting for another few minutes just to see and see what happens you can see he's popped his head up now and I'm, I wonder if that's maybe because of the fact that he's maybe heard these Impalas alarm calling as well in the distance and that's why he's just kind of po poked his head up but you can see that dewlap that is forming that I was talking about earlier that skin is starting to hang a little bit and he's growing up day by day isn't he he's starting to get very bulky as well his shoulder area is quite large and so he looks absolutely great no one i think it was i didn't get the name very well there sorry nikki um you're wondering if hosana should be called a sub-adult now yes indeed uh, Milan. There we go. Sorry about that. Yes, Hosanna is a sub-adult now. So he is he's not an adult and he's not a cub anymore. He's most definitely a sub-adult. He's at that age where he has now basically kind of, even if Karula was still around, he would have left Karula by now. He's now in that nomadic phase of his life where he's still utilizing a bit of the natal territory in order to kind of set himself up. And then from there, he'll move around a little bit. What's been interesting with him in particular is that he has not distributed as far as I would have thought. And, and it's because of the behavior of Tingana. Tingana is not pushing him. And we've seen him and Tingana together. And it's only when Tingana starts pushing him will he then start to move on anywhere. The other problem that he has is that there's not really anywhere to go. At the Flat Rock Mail on Londolozi. He's got his other brother in the form of Konuma to the south. He's quarantined to the east. And so he's got kind of not really many options so sitting tight where he is now on little gari and juma and and chitwa is the best place for him because at the end of the day as long as dad's being tolerant he's not having to fight with any of these other male leopards and he can then try and wing it and get bigger and stronger before he moves on Kristen, you're wondering if Hosanna is rewriting the Leopard Manual. Well, I suppose to a degree, it's, it's, been, it's been really interesting watching his behavior. He's certainly the first young male leopard that I've seen as social as, the, as what he is. I've, I, you know, him and Tumba. Tumba also seems not to care at all with, uh, with all these other females. Not quite as much as Hosanna, but it's still he kind of hangs around with the females too. But he definitely is far different to a lot of the young males that I've seen and he, his distribution 
has not taken place that quickly. Normally, you'll see when a young male loses his mom or is no longer with his mom that he starts to leave really quickly and is no longer seen after a few months. Whereas uh, Hassan has been here most of the year. He looks completely comfortable. Doesn't look like he's getting any pressure at this stage. And so, who knows? Maybe he is going to rewrite the books. And, and that's the best thing about being out here, watching these safaris, being a part of this and sharing all of this with you guys live is that we follow these cats and we follow these characters and, and these animals and we look learn things that maybe books can't tell us. I mean, each animal is unique. Each animal will adapt to its surroundings and adapt to its situation in its own unique way. And, you know, sometimes books just aren't always the answer. Sometimes the animals don't read these books. They don't know what rules are. And they will do things the way that they feel needs to be done in order to survive. Now, Nikki, I didn't hear you, I'm afraid. If you can repeat that again for me, sorry. So Palin, you asking if leopards can write. Well, yes, I suppose if Hosanna was rewriting his book, it would be a requirement in, to write. Maybe he can. He's got a, an app where he can just dictate and it just writes for him. Or he's going to employ the services of James Hendry, who we know is an author in his own right, and get him to write the book <laughs> and write a book for him. And did you say you'd read anything that he wrote? Well, are we talking about James now or are we talking about Hosanna? Either way, I suppose it would be entertaining if you combined the two of them together. I feel like James's wit with Hosanna's goofiness would probably combine to make an incredibly good book to read. So maybe that's what we should do is The Tales of Hosanna by James R. A. Hendry and co-authored by Hosanna himself. But it is amazing to see him. Like I say, I always, even though he's sleeping and he's not up to too much, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend time with him this afternoon. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But we are going to have to move now. Unfortunately, we have really have pushed it a little bit. And so while we kind of leave this area, let's go back across to Noel and the drama of the wild dog as it unfolds into the darkness of the night. <laughs> 